enjoyed guest week last week. It was so fun for us to film, but now it's time to get back to the DIYs. Today I'm going to show you how to make these hexagon, also known as honeycomb, shelves, which are so on trend right now, but they tend to be pretty expensive and most of us aren't sitting on a pile of money. So instead, I'm going to show you how to reuse those old boxes you have lying around to make them out of cardboard. To begin with, you'll need to print out the PDF pattern that I will link right down below. It's four pages and it can print on normal 8.5 by 11 paper. And if you want to modify the pattern to make it a different size, I'll give you some tips on how to do that at the end of this video. But for now, let's get started. I'm working on the floor today because my desk is a mess and also it's just kind of easier to spread out down there. So the first thing to do is to cut out some of the excess paper around the two pieces of the hexagon and then tape those together. And then if you want to, you can trim some of the excess around the other sheets as well. Now if you have a large box like this one, lay down the pages and use a utility knife to cut out pieces of cardboard that fit under each of the patterns. You don't have to be neat here, this is just to make it easier to work with later. So now that you have smaller pieces of cardboard, tape the pattern to the cardboard and use a ruler and an X-Acto knife to go over all of the lines. You don't have to go all the way through the cardboard right now, you just want to make a deep enough cut that when you take away the pattern, you can see those lines underneath. So now take away the pattern and there you go, you can see the cutting lines beginning to show. Go over them a few more times until the rectangles break free and you have six evenly shaped rectangles. Then do the same thing with the other rectangles in the pattern so that you have six large rectangles and six small rectangles. And if you can, try to cut them so that the short side of the rectangles are on the flat side of the cardboard and the long side of the rectangles are on the wavy side. This will just make them easier to trim down later if you have to. So now tape down the hexagon and start cutting that out as well. This one will take a little longer, but just take your time. Start from the inside, making sure that you're not cutting into the hexagon shape that you'll be keeping, and then do all of the outside lines. Remove the paper and start going over the lines from the inside again. Once you've removed the inside hexagon, go over all of the outside lines, and then you have this cardboard hexagon. So now you should have the hexagon and all of the rectangles, and now it's time to plug in your hot glue gun. Make sure to also have plenty of extra hot glue gun sticks on hand. So once the glue is warmed up, put down a line of hot glue on one of the inside edges, making sure that if your cardboard has writing on it, that it faces to the inside of the shape so that you won't be able to see it later. Put the first rectangle on the hot glue, trying to keep it at a 90 degree angle, and then put down another line of hot glue and attach the second piece. Then use your hot glue to glue them together at the seam and hold them in place for a minute while the glue sets. Once you have the first two in place, it's easy to just keep working your way around the entire shape. When you get to the last piece, trim it down a little if you have to, to get it to to fit snugly in place, and then glue that in as well. Once all of that is dry, if you have extra hot glue gun sticks on hand, go around the whole thing adding another layer of hot glue to add a little more stability. Don't be shy here, you definitely want those pieces to stay in place. Let that dry completely, and then do the same thing for the outer pieces. A trick for these is to cut down the bottom layer of cardboard so that it becomes a bit of a diagonal and then the pieces can fit together a little more nicely. As you're gluing them down, it's a little trickier to get as much glue in there, so just put down a thick layer to start with, and also push some down the inside seams, where it can kind of drip down to hold them together. So once you've attached the last piece, your basic hexagon shelf is complete. Let the glue dry fully, and while that's drying, start cutting up some of your scrap cardboard into about 20 small pieces. Then figure out where the bottom of your shelf is going to be, turn it over and place the extra cardboard into the valley. With cardboard this thick, you should be able to fit about four or five pieces. Do this all the way around except on top since that's where it'll hang from. If you've used enough cardboard, you shouldn't need any glue to keep them in place and they'll add a lot more stability and strength to the shelf. So now this is optional, but if it's not quite as neat as you'd like, grab some sandpaper and go over all of the edges to get rid of the really sharp lines. Then 
then if you like the industrial look you can leave it as is or you can grab some spray paint like I decided to do. I went with gold but you can do any color or use acrylic paint or paint on a pattern or cover it in decorative paper. The options are limitless and it's just up to you. So when the paint is dry put up a thumbtack or nail and hang your shelf on the wall. Obviously since this is only cardboard you don't want to put any books or anything too heavy on them but you can display any lightweight things that you want to. Or if you don't want to hang them, you could also just set them on a table in any configuration you like. I love how those came out, and I love that I got to hop on the home decor trend bandwagon, but by recycling and not by emptying out my bank account. So the pattern will be linked right down below, but if you want to adjust it, here are a few tips. If you want to change the depth of the shelf, just change the width of the rectangles, making sure that they're both still even. If you want to make the hexagon wider or thinner, draw the shape you want and then draw rectangles at the right length. And if you want to make the entire thing larger or smaller, just change the size on your computer or use a photocopier to enlarge or shrink the pattern. I think tiny ones would just be so cute. If anyone makes those, please send me a picture. And once you understand the basic geometry, you can make these in any shape you want, be it a square, a triangle, an octagon, whatever you want. That's why it's called a DIY. So if you missed my last DIY on this channel, I made these really cute food themed bottle cap magnets, which you can watch right over there. And if you missed guest week last week, it was so fun. We got to talk crafting with David Bromstad, Mr. Kate Redbanger. It was great. I'll link the entire playlist down below. And make sure you stay tuned because next week, begins our Halloween crafting month. It's going to be so fun. I'm so excited for you guys to see what we're working on. But that's going to be it for me for today, so I will see you all again next week. Bye everyone!